Hey guys, welcome back. I am Chris. And I'm Randy. And you guys are watching Marksman TV. Welcome back to another unboxing video. Today we have quite a few things to get through, so let's go ahead and jump into it now. All right, first, before we get into this, we did get some really cool stuff in through the website and through the door that uh, we got in since the last unboxing video, so we wanted to take a minute to highlight some of those. So what do we have here on the table, Randy? Well, let's start with this one, Chris. We have the Smith & Wesson Model 629 44 Magnum. Uh, a lot of you are very familiar with the Model 29 Dirty Harry gun, uh, which, which made the Model 29 famous and almost impossible to get back in those days because of the popularity. This is the stainless steel version of it. Um, it's a favorite of mine. It's a very nice gun. I would say this one is in um, probably the high end of good condition. Um, you can tell it has been fired, some minor handling marks, but a very nice specimen. This is a Dash 3, so it's an earlier version, uh, very desirable. Yeah, uh, we got from the same seller a Model 64-3, a very small 38 Special. This has the 4-inch heavy profile barrel. One of the interesting things about the Model 64 is they were used with a lot of police departments. So in our earlier years of running the shop, we actually got in a batch of police surplus Model 64s, and you can still find those on the market today. You usually have department markings sort of scribed into the side of the frame, so that will hurt the value in some cases. They're usually just like numbers electric penciled into the side of the frame. But this one was obviously a commercially owned uh, firearm, nice square butt on it, uh, heavy barrel, as I said. So really, really nice. Again, condition on this one, I'd probably say high end of, of uh, good to very good condition. So very, very nice on that one. Okay, here we have the Smith & Wesson PC-1911. It's a performance center gun. Um, I mean, where do you start with this, Chris? It's got... Adjustable sights and yeah. lightning cuts in the slide. And I believe, normally don't these come with G10s? I think I believe they, so. they normally do. Mm -hmm. Or the, the wooden fish scales. I don't know if this is original. I don't know if these grip sets are original in this. But stainless about the slide and the frame, fish scale serrations on the rear of the slide. Excellent trigger, just a nice loaded 1911. Yes. And they're, you know, comparative to other 1911s, especially in today's market, they do not break the bank. They are affordable if you could find a good condition when used. Um, what about this? This is a favorite of yours, right? Oh, yeah. This is the uh, actually a pre band Colt Sporter Match H bar or heavy barrel uh, AR 15. Um, it was somewhere in the 90s, just before the ban, and, and indications of that are uh, the, the bolt uh, carrier group, the bottom uh, part has been cut down, which was one of the compliance things. Uh, the bayonet lug was already being milled off, but it does have the threaded barrel. So it definitely is a pre ban uh, Very desirable, very accurate target rifle. If you want a uh, target shooting AR-15, this is the one that you want right here. And being the heavy barrel as opposed to the government profile that you found on like the M16A2s, you do have a, uh, on the original government profile barrel, there's a tapered cut underneath the handguard, which lightens the weight of the barrel. The heavy barrel on this is a heavy profile from the front to the end, which does make the firearm noticeably heavier, but you have more mass on the barrel, so that helps with your heating, your uh, harmonics or whatnot in your accuracy department. So really cool firearm. And last we have, this is an ATI Galeo, which is really an ATI Galil. Now, I actually had one of these on the weekly used gun uh, review videos maybe like three months ago or so, so there's a lot of information there if you want to go back and take a look at it. But Israel had actually been using a variant of the FAL. They had actually also uh, gotten submissions for a new weapon system program from the United States with the M16. But one of the things they liked is they had seen the Mahdi AKs uh, formerly had gone up against them in military conflict and especially in sandy conditions and whatnot. They did like the AK pattern, but the 556 cartridge. Uh, so uh, Galil would, Israel Galil would submit uh, this as an option and would actually be adopted. Even though it would be adopted in standard service, actually not as many of these would be issued as the M16, which did see supplemental uh, military service as well. And that would stay up all the way through the 90s. But anyway, very, very cool firearm. 
happy to get all these in, so let's get to the boxes. All right, our first one up here today comes to us from a customer in Oregon, so let's go ahead and jump into it. All right. Documents inside. Shipping Tupperware. All right, <laughs> Tupperware. <laughs> I was just thinking I need something new for my famous potato salad. I like the looks of that. <laughs> Some old... Are like, we at the bottom? I believe so. Looks like we have a couple old classics here. First up, that's a little 22, Intratec 22. Uses... They actually look like Ruger 1022 mags. I wonder if they I are Ruger. They are. Yeah, they look like Ruger 1022 extended magazines. Um, these I do not know that much about. I've had a few of them in here. Manufactured, manufactured by Intratech, known as the Scorpion. It is an inexpensive little polymer 22 LR. Definitely has the classic 80s type of aesthetic and look to it. Not made anymore, but really not much else to say about it. Uh, we can jump right into condition. What do you think about the condition of that one, Randy? Um, Considering the age of it, Chris, I say definitely good. I would call it good condition. Yeah, customer says fair, so yeah, yeah. kind of un understated a little bit. But I mean, I could see where he's getting at. There are some handling marks throughout, but for its age and what it is, good would be a fine assessment of that. Yeah. Uh, moving on down, oh, very nice. That is a Cobra, I am sure. Yeah, it is a Cobra M11. So the Cobra, this is a semi-automatic version of the famous Mac series manufactured, or I should say designed by Ingram. Uh, there was, that was an open bolt submachine gun. I actually have a video of me firing a full automatic Mac 10 on this channel, maybe from three years ago. But these are really cool. Uh, they're fun sort of novelties, especially the older Cobra ones. There are companies today that are manufacturing these, um, but the Cobra ones are a little bit older. Uh, not super expensive or super valuable, but they are sort of nostalgic and interesting, kind of again from that 80s, 70s, 80s time period. Uh, what do you think about the condition on that one? And is this for this? I think so. Yeah. Ooh, Ooh I that. like that, yeah. It's like falling down. No, that was a Tech 9. Yeah. <laughs> when he shoots the ceiling. Uh, what do you think about the condition there? Again, Chris, I would say considering uh, the age of it, uh, I mean, there's scratches throughout, but uh, it's really what I, I would consider good condition for the uh, era of the gun. The customer said fair, so yeah. again, Fair is fine, good would have been okay as well. So, very cool. And what's our last one there? It says Intratech. Um, we're gonna need wire cutters. There we go. We need the Galil. And my, ah. <laughs> if we use the Galil. So we do not have the Galil okay. anymore. Dan Damn. has put it in a box. <laughs> that would have been a lot of fun though. Ah, okay, so this is, I believe, the box for this. But in here is a Smith & Wesson model. Which one are we looking at? 6906. So this is, what is it? Yeah, so this is gonna be single action only, or it's a magazine disconnect, let's try it. Oh, so it's double single action, but a spurless hammer. Uh, condition of this one, what do you think? I'm going to stay the course, Chris, and say for the uh, for the age of the gun, uh, the marks on it, I would still call it good condition. Uh, I would agree, and that's what the customer said. And this third generation Smith the Wessons, this is an alloy frame, steel slide, of course. Uh, again, very popular through the late 80s and the 90s. So, so far we're getting a very 80s type theme here. So we'll see if that continues. But excellent handguns, and again, not a whole lot of money if you're looking on a budget. In fact, I have an idea for a video about that sort of topic, so I might keep this for that video idea. But anyway, let's move on to the next box. All right, up next we have one from a customer in Missouri, so let's go ahead and jump into it. We have two. Mm -hmm. All right. What do we have here? We've got a Glock and a CZ-75. Glock 43X. Cool thing about this, 
9 millimeter. This is the older bitone one. So right when the 43X hit the market, initially it had this bitone type finish. It's an NDLC ion bond coating silver. They didn't have one in black. A lot of people complained about it. They wanted it in all black. So then they came out with all black and discontinued this one. So it's kind of cool. This would make this sort of probably most likely a first year production 43X. This one has night sights on it. So really cool. Um, this is sort of Glock's response to the SIG P365, um, one and a half stack, 10 round capacity, slightly larger in size than the standard model Glock 43, uh, nine millimeter, of course. What do you think about condition of that one? Uh, it's got a few handling marks on it, um, but I would say the high end of good to very good, Chris. Yeah, and I'd probably go with very good myself. I mean, the marks are very hard to catch especially if held out here, but I, I personally would go with very good. But anyway, what's the customer say? Customer says, customer says very good. All right, we have a winner. Yep. I don't even know where it's at. Ah, look at that. CZ75, looks like it's a CZ75B Omega. I think they call this the combat or the tactical. It's got a decocker on it different grip scales and the magazine capacity is 17 rounds. Ooh. Actually, I think with the extensions, I think this is 19. It's a plus two, so it's a 19 round. I would say the condition is very good, Chris. Yeah, I would agree. I would say, I would even, if, if he says excellent, I would take excellent. But very Let's good is probably says. where I would go. Let's see what he says. And the answer is excellent, Chris. <laughs> I'm a winner. <laughs> Anyway, let's move on to the next box. Next up, we have one from a customer in Texas. Let's see what's in here, Chris. Oh, look at that. Yeah, some... Lots of, uh, lots of magazines. Okay. Car Arms. Is that a, what model is that? K9? K9. Yeah. Car Arms K9. Uh, what do you think about the condition? It does have some handling marks. Um, I would say probably good, maybe yeah. the upper end of good. That's what I would say, and that's what the yeah. customer said. Car Arms, for those who don't know, they make a full line of pistols. Most of them are inexpensive. I don't know if they make the K9 anymore. Most of the ones we see are like the CW, the CM, the PM line pistols. The CW and the CM are pretty inexpensive, brand new, they're under $400. Uh, you, uh, and the uh, the PM is sort of like, it has the match grade barrel in it and extra machining on the slide, comes with two magazines instead of one. Those are super high end, those are like in the $600 plus range. But the K9, again, I don't know if they make it, but they have a little bit more heft and weight to them and a little bit more size than the CW and all those. Uh, but still a really interesting concealed carry pistol, especially if you put the MAC-10 grip in there. Mac 10 magazine. I Maybe could hold can. that with both hands, Chris. <laughs> we could. <laughs> um, let me give you a. Uh, this is a more standard. honest representation, I believe. So easily concealable, and this is probably six or seven rounds. So kind of, it's an older era handgun, but still very cool nonetheless. So big thank you to our customer. We will keep moving. All right, up next we have one from a customer in Pennsylvania. Like a couple canics and an HK. I'll do it. Right. Let's start. Let's start with the HK. Why not? Let's get into the good stuff. Ooh, that's very nice. HK USP nine millimeter. One of their more popular lines. USP has been around for a while. It is a double single action. This is probably a V1. Does have a safety decocker on it. I don't know if the box says this is a V1. Yeah. So, um, not a lot to say about the HK pistols. We have had a ton of them in here and on the channels. They are just known for their quality. They're very, very nice handguns. And uh, some of their products are actually pretty affordable, like the VP series. But I always like the USPs, uh, the HK45, the, the P2000, and all those. So. Uh, anyway, what do you think about the condition of that one? I would say excellent, Chris. Yep, that's what the customer said, and I would totally agree. The thing looks brand new. There's not even anywhere on the barrel or anything like that. So we will go on with that one. Moving on to the next one. <clears throat> so, 
So in the box we have a can of Rival. This I believe is our newest introduction. Really cool fire. Wow. Yeah. Man, they they spare no expense there. No. You have uh, basically non-stop places to grip the thing. You can even grip it on the barrel apparently. You can grip it on the, uh, you can grip it everywhere. <laughs> there are serrations all over the slide, which is, just looks really cool. There's lightning cuts on the top and the sides. SFX series, so more of their competition. Uh, optics ready on the top, comes with all the optics plate. Two magazines, holster, you have a magazine well, extension or adapter there as well. This is a really freaking cool package. I think this is the second one we've had in. But man, Canik, they're just doing awesome things. Um, you know, they started really hitting the market by force. It's been not that long ago. It's been within the past 10 years, and they've really made a splash in the market, especially because for what they offer, their firearms are affordable. Uh, what do you think about the condition there? I can already tell what you're going to say. Yeah, it's excellent. Yeah, excellent condition is totally right, and we will, um, yeah, that's what the customer said, so no problems there. And last, this is a Canik also. This is their white or white out, I think is what people call it. But it's a signature series S, um, SF, from the SFX line, all white in configuration. They apparently only made 7,500 of them. So on the signature series, you have a number of 1410 of 7,500 made. So this is somewhat of a limited edition collector series, if you will, in the Canic line. People actually really do like these things though. And again, looks unfired and brand new with hang tags still on the box. I don't think we need to go over what the condition is. It's pretty obvious. It's an excellent, excellent. Light, light new condition. Yeah. It says signature series on the slide here. Very, very cool pistol. So kind of, there's are, there are can of collectors out there. So this is more of the collectible, got to have whole filler type firearm. So two really cool kind of premium can of pistols. So very cool. We will keep moving along. Next up is one from a customer in Kentucky. Let's see what's in here, Chris. Ooh. I get more and more impressed with packing Look, look at this. It's, it's even insulated from the look cold. Look at this. It, it's climate control. <laughs> it's a climate, it, yeah. I'm saving that for email lunches. <laughs> this is going to be my new lunchbox. My new lunchbox, yeah. <laughs> okay, first up, uh, we have a PPK. This one manufactured by Smith & Wesson. Now, a lot of people don't really like these Smith & Wesson uh, PPKs as they were, they did have a lot of issues upon early release. However, this one's interesting, and this one's actually in 32 ACP, which is what the original PPKs were chambered in. But as time would go on, most people would want these in 380, and all the more modern produced PPKs are chambered in 380. Very few are chambered in 32. So this one's actually kind of a rarity, being that it is a 32 automatic, which is kind of cool. Um, other than that, some of the identifying features of a Smith & Wesson PPK is the extended beaver tail here. That was a feature that they added. Uh, but anyway, very interesting. Well, Colonel Walther, PPK, under license, yep, yeah, Smith & Wesson. So, and not this is not a PPK-S, it is a PPK. PPK-S has the PP frame and PPK slide and barrel. What do you think about the condition of that one? No box, but does have original factory grips. It's got quite a few handling marks on it. It's a beautiful gun, but with uh, with the scratches uh, down the polished part of the slide, I would probably say good condition, Chris. I would say good as well. Customer did say very good, so I think it is a little bit too rough, but um, a lot of this can be cleaned up, and we will take a look at polishing some of those marks off. You can get that off with like a fiber cut. Uh, 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 steel wool. Scotch, scotch right back. No, not steel wool. Oh. Uh, scotch right pack so you can get some of those little nicks and they're, they're not very deep so it will clean up nicely so no problems there at all but a really cool firearm and let's move on then to the next one ah. it's the 80s again <laughs> wow this is an ap9 looks a lot like a um, tech 9 uh, yeah, the AP9 made by, what is it, it was AA, is that right? Well, I can't find the markings. That's a lot like a Tech 9. We'll just look at the paper. AA Arms slash Kimmel, AP9. AP9. 
they came out with these in the late 80s. Um, very much a copy off of the Tech 9 series. Uh, manufactured until about the mid 90s, so they did not see a very long life. Um, this little cuts compensator was not actually found on all of them and a little bit more rare to find this on it. Um, but not much else to say about it. Looks like there's a couple more. Ooh, lots of, lots of magazines. Lots of magazines. Oh, they just keep coming. They just, they just, like just keep coming out of it. I like. I, I want this one. Yeah. Let's, let's put that one in there. All right. Oh <laughs> yeah. That's the that. '80s Miami Vice, which I believe. No, that wasn't a Miami Vice. That was a Tech Nine too, and everything was a Tech Nine. But anyway, very cool. Um, what do you think about the condition of that? One? It's got dust on it from the from the inside yeah. of the liner. Which yeah, is, I think it was the inside of the liner. That's what I was trying to blow off there. Um, I would say good, probably high end of good, considering um, the age of the gun. Maybe very good. Uh, very. I think I honestly cannot see any marks on it. I mean, there's a lot of oh, there's the markings. AA arms. Uh, I mean, I can't see any handling marks or wear marks. There's dust on it from the liner, which can be cleaned off. There's no marks on the bolt, no marks on this. There's no dings or anything on the polymer lower receiver. Um, honestly, I would go with the high, high end, very good to even excellent, especially considering this is a you know 30 year old, 20 to 30 year old firearm. That's what I would say. What are the customers? Okay. He says excellent, so I would I take that. It's fine. Yep. Um, excellent is a fair assessment of this, but very unique and probably I think the first one of these we've ever actually even had. So very cool. Let's move on to the next box. All right, last but not least, we have this one comes actually from the same customer in Kentucky. This is one of those like uh, Russian doll tricks. Oh, it's a box in a box. A box in a box. And it's like a box. Picture in the picture. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Motorcycle helmet box. Or is that BMX? I think it's actually BMX. <laughs> Would be really cool if the helmet was actually in there and the guns were inside the helmet. <laughs> At his attention to packaging things? Shipping helmet. <laughs> <laughs> We've never had one of those. Never <laughs> had a shipping helmet. We have shipping washcloths, shipping towels, shipping sheets, shipping... I don't know. That's about it. <laughs> that, that's about it. About it. All right. Intratac box again. That one's heavy. Ugh. All right, a lot of insulation. All right, let's jump into it. First up, Intratec box. Ah, very, very nice. Mm. So this is an Intratec uh, KG99. So. When the Tech 9 would come in, of course the original Tech 9 was a fully automatic little submachine pistol. It fired from the open bolt. Uh, they made civilian semi-automatic versions in the in the 1980s when it came in, uh, and they also worked on an open bolt principle, but they were semi-automatic only. The ATF said that that was too easily convertible into a full auto, so they made Intratech uh, come out with a version that was uh, that was a closed bolt version, and that is what the KG99 was. So it was the first closed bolt version of the Tech 9. One of the problems with this is uh, the way the internal parts were configured. I would have to actually break it down to look at it. It required higher pressure ammunition, but the problem is, is with the higher pressure ammunition, it would cause the frames and things to crack on these. So they redesigned it again, and they came out with the Tech 9 version. But these are actually very uncommon. The KG99 version is not nearly as common as the Tech 9. They did not make these for very long before they switched their manufacturing practices over on them. So this is actually quite a rarity. Very cool. Um, oh, also, this is a vertical grip, original KG99 or Intratac vertical grip, which is very difficult to find. Would attach somewhere up here, but because this is a pistol, this cannot be installed on it as you cannot have two gripping locations. But cool that this is included. So if it were SBR'd, which you can do, there's already a vertical grip that you can put on it and be kind of cool. But yeah, you would not want to attach. I don't even think there's no mounting hardware even with it. So um, very, very interesting. Did I do that wrong? No, I didn't. No. There we go. Man, it's like, it's the 80s video, Randy. 
Yeah. Hear Miami Vice music playing in my head, Chris. <laughs> I've been hearing Miami Vice music playing in my head for years. What do you think about the condition of that one? I would have to say very good to excellent, Chris. Customer says good, so I would mm. actually say, yeah, very good. This was actually Cerakoted, so this is not the original finish, oh. and that's probably why he, yeah. I, I didn't remember that until I just saw that on the thing. This is actually Interdynamics, not Interdynamics. Yeah, Interdynamics. Again, they would ch change your name to Intratech at some point, so this is when it was known as Interdynamics. So anyway, very cool. Uh, let's see what we have last over there. Ooh, another Mac. So, yeah, that's a big one. <laughs> that's that's what was that be more of a Mac 10 Mac type 10. model? 10. 45 ACP. Yeah. yeah. That is a. That's what I'm talking about. That's Chris. a big. That's a brick right there. Yeah, that's heavy. Another Mac, but the Mac 10, which Mac 10 was used in the higher calibers, like a 45 ACP. Although you can get the Mac 10 in nine millimeter. Um, this one actually made by Velocity LLC, which I believe is actually more of a modern manufacturer. I would have to look that up. Um, but again, we've already had one in here. Here's another one. It is a Mac. And we talk about these little machine pistols. It just makes you feel like you're in the 80s. Yeah. Love it. Anyway, uh, what do you think about the condition of that one? Heavy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, honestly, Chris, I would say very good to excellent. Customer says very good, so we will roll with that. But that is all we have, so I'll end it here. All right, guys, well, that is all we have for you today on this video. Thank you so much for stopping by and checking this video out. If you enjoyed, please let us know by hitting that like button. Please also consider subscribing to our channel and hit that bell notification button so you are aware when we are posting new content. We're going to leave you guys off there. I am Chris. And I am Randy. We will see you next time. No, 17, 18, 19. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the box says 18. 18. We have Correction. 18. 17, 18, 19. 19. So it's 18. It says 17, and the thing says plus 2. 17, 18, 19. It just doesn't add up, Chris. <laughs> uh, can we send that back? We're going to return this one. It has obviously been rebuilt. <laughs> it's messing with my head. <laughs> Next up is a Panic Rival, which, if I'm not mistaken, is one of their newer... <laughs> so this pistol is actually one of their newest introductions into yes. the line. It is very concealable, as you can see. You have to be careful not to... Micro-carry. Sounds like it's loaded, but Clear. I don't know how to get the round out of it. Oh, here we go. <laughs> so, this is what they sent over to the French in the Second World War. Yes. To, uh, Never fired and only dropped one. <laughs> <laughs> Next up is from a customer in Kentucky. Little Rock. That's a fine <laughs> little town. Yeah, through Little Rock. Fine yeah. little town. <laughs> Good thug that like helps out old ladies across the street and stuff, you know. A good thug that helps old ladies across the street. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be in that movie. <laughs> All right, so here is our thumbnail. Bear with us. <laughs> I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> I feel so weird just standing here holding these while I talk. I feel pretty awesome. I feel, Chris. I feel, I feel powerful. I mean, I don't think I I've felt this good in a long time. I feel like so. I'm wearing a $5,000 suit right now. I really don't know what to do with my hands. Can you like just give me a moment with these mats, please? <laughs> I'm leaving Randy, but the camera's still on. <laughs>